Depending on the market you get started in, you can buy real estate for anywhere from a hundred or $200,000 up to tens of millions of dollars, really. But the big question is which types of properties are actually gonna give you the best return when you're getting started investing in short-term rentals? And what should an ideal price range be for that first property? Surely there must be some properties that are too small to bother and others might be too expensive to really be worth it. So. That's a question I get asked pretty often. What price should I spend, for, should I pay for my first property? And although there isn't one specific answer to this, and obviously it depends on the level of profit that you want from the property, uh, it depends on how much money you have, you can have properties at various different price ranges that will perform well, there is generally a range that I recommend to people. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on a good starting range for your first short-term rental property as an investment. And I'm gonna share with you some different caveats to it, where you can find these different properties, and ultimately just why I think that this kind of range is ideal. So let's jump right into it. What I find to be the ideal range for purchasing your first short-term rental property is generally gonna be anywhere from 300 to about $800,000. Now, the reason that I have this as kind of the ideal range is for a couple of reasons. On the low end, if you're buying a property that is under $300,000, you just have to be aware of the fact that even if you get a good return on a percentage basis, meaning your cash on cash percentage is good, it's within KPI, it's exactly where it should be, the actual absolute dollars of that are going to be relatively minimal. You have to remember, even if you're buying a small property that performs well, you're not actually gonna make that much money in terms of absolute dollars and cents on that property. So it likely just isn't going to be that worthwhile for your time. The other thing you have to consider is that all else being equal, if you're earning 15% on a $500,000 property or 15% on a $100,000 property for your cash on cash return, you're gonna spend just as much time and effort, relatively speaking, to manage that $500,000 property as you would the $100,000 one, and you're gonna make about five times more. So it's really just kind of makes sense to go and invest in a larger property to a certain extent. So that's why I have the kind of lower end of the range there. It's not to say that you should never buy a property that's $100,000 or $200,000. If you want to, to get started, and that's what you have the budget for, you can absolutely do it. You can find good deals that will give you good returns at those lower price points. You just wanna be mindful that as you grow, you may wanna start looking at more expensive properties that are gonna give you a better payoff for the amount of effort that you're putting in. Now, what about the top end? Why not just go buy a one or two or $3 million property? And the reason for this is that generally speaking, if you're going and spending more than $800,000 on a property, and in some areas it'll be more than 900, more than a million, some areas it'll be if you're spending more than $500,000, you're gonna be getting into one of two categories, either more high-end luxury properties or multi-unit properties. Now, I have some problems with both of those categories for first-time investors especially. Luxury properties tend to be the properties that get hit the hardest in economic downturns. The reason being that the people that are spending 500, 800, 1,000, 2,000 dollars a night to stay at a property typically are willing to pull that back and spend a little bit less. So you see that when we go into a bit of a recession or an economic downturn, you'll start to see that those luxury properties don't do as well. They tend to drop pretty significantly in performance, whereas those mid-range kind of more average properties, more maybe on the upscale side of average, tend to perform pretty consistently because the people that are downgrading from higher quality properties are gonna go in there. You're still gonna have enough people booking those properties that they tend to stay pretty consistent. So so there's just less volatility and less risk with a more average or upscale side of average property as opposed to a very high-end property. Then if we look at multifamily properties, they can actually be fantastic. In fact, I recommend them for a lot of people. A lot of situations, they can be really great for short-term rental. However, if you're getting into your first short-term rental property, you may be looking and biting off a little bit more than you can chew. You're likely going to be getting into commercial lending at that point, so you're probably gonna have to put more money down. It can be a little bit harder to really get the good returns that you're wanting. So it can be a really, really good strategy, but not my favorite strategy for the first-time investor. 
Are you a brand new or experienced Airbnb host, co-host, or investor who wants to host as successfully, as profitably, and with as much fun as possible? If so, then I would love to invite you to check out BNB Tribe linked in the description down below this video. It's our exclusive community for Airbnb hosts, investors, and co-hosts from all over the world where I share some of my best trainings that go into detail on every single aspect of Airbnb hosting from A to Z. We've got advanced training playbooks that will help you to use more advanced strategies to take things to the next level and make more money and have more fun hosting, co-hosting, hosting or investing on Airbnb. You're also going to get access to an incredible community and over $2,500 worth of deals, perks, discounts, bonuses that I've negotiated with other vendors in the short-term rental industry. So if you want access to all of that and a whole bunch more, check out the link in the description down below for BNB Tribe, and I would love to see you on the inside. What do you want to look for within that range? Because obviously, it's a big range. You can go 300,000, you can go 800,000. There's a lot of variance there. And ultimately, that's going to come down to the budget you have how much you're able to borrow from any lender that you're working with. And there are various different lending options available when you're investing in short-term rentals. Um, And you're also going to want to look at things like, do you want to renovate that property? Do you want to buy something relatively turnkey? If you're going to be renovating the property, you need to make sure that you set aside cash for that renovation that you're now not going to be able to use for the down payment on the property. You also want to make sure you have budget for furniture. You want to make sure that financially you're going to be in a comfortable place investing into that property. You also want to look at what the going rate is for properties in a given market. So for example, if you're in a market where most properties are in the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar range, then you might be going into really high end luxury properties when you're at six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars. So you want to stay again, it's more so about the type of property you're staying at and also the nightly rates you have to charge in order to get a good return on that investment. If you're gonna be charging really premium nightly rates for that area, then you may want to shy away from that because it just could be more volatile. It's not to say you don't want to buy a property property that you can charge good nightly rates for and healthy premium nightly rates for. It is just to say that if you have to be getting those really premium nightly rates in order to just break even and make ends meet, then you may want to reconsider. In terms of what to look for, there's lots to consider when buying a short-term rental property. It's a lot more than just the price. You have to look at ultimately the amount of revenue you're going to be getting on that property relative to the purchase price you're paying for it. So like any good real estate investor, we're always looking for a good deal on the property we're buying, but there's a slightly different lens that we're looking at the deal through than other people might be looking at. Ultimately, yeah, we want to get a great deal on the property, buy something for less than what it's worth, maybe have some potential to increase the value of it, but ultimately, we want to buy the most income potential. I highly recommend that any new investor start thinking about the property they're purchasing as an income stream. If I can buy a $100,000 income stream for $500,000 versus paying $400,000 for that same income stream, I would much rather pay less for the income stream because that's going to get me a better return on my investment. So there's all these different factors you'll want to consider in order to make that decision from looking at AirDNA data to looking at comparable properties to assessing what amenities you might want to add or the location of the property is. There's all kinds of things that go into making that decision. And ultimately, again, I just want to stress that it's not to say there's really one single right answer to the price you should pay for a property. And certainly not every property in that three hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar range is a good investment. Most of them are not good investments for a short term rental. But all else being equal, if you do your due diligence, you find a really good property, I generally recommend spending within that range to make sure that you're getting a good return on your time and not taking on too much risk. I want to know your thoughts as well. That's in my experience and experience with the investors we worked with. If you have thoughts, comments, questions, let me know in the, in the comment section down below. If you want to learn from me, you want to learn more in depth, how to analyze deals, how to find the right markets, all that stuff, check out our training resources in the links in the description down below. I'd love to work with you in there. Um, and like the video, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps you out with growing this channel, getting these videos for more people. Make sure you subscribe as well. If you're new to the channel here, we do post two new videos every single week uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. It'll alert you so you can stay up to date and make sure you check out the videos when they launch. All that being said, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.